Okay, this is the next section in Python anywhere. Uh, this Grammarly error, it's variable names, it doesn't recognize computer code. Okay, so we're going to go back to using the console. It's actually up to you if you want to try doing this in a program. The problem is if you do it in the program, you, you wind up running everything time and again. It's fine, it's not a problem uh, for me, as long as you make sure you're pulling out the right bits for each experiment that you're demonstrating. I'm going to continue using the console. The reason is it's an immediate response. It shows me what's going on quickly. Um, I'm looking at my consoles. Oh, look, I've got an exercise from last lesson, so I can't remember what's in there. So I'm going to close the console down. Choose a Python session. Now, if you look through the worksheet, there is actually a point here where it says this only works in Python 3.3 and above for that command. The reason is um, at 3.3 they introduced a new way of being able to display variables. Uh, so that's why we are using everything Python 3 and above. Now, when I get to that example, I'll come to you quickly. I'm not going to do all the commands. I'm just going to show you uh, what's going on. Well, the first thing we need to know is what we mean by a variable. And the sorts of variables we're dealing with are things called strings. Strings are just uh, a series of letters and numbers that represent something, some information to be displayed on the screen. So that is a string that's been presented to the screen. It consists of numbers, points, letters. That creates a string. And to be able to use data effectively, we need to be able to store that in memory somewhere. And the commands for storing things in memory uh, look like a piece of mathematics, but the logic can be a little bit awkward for people. Um, what we're going to use is something called a variable, and the variable allows things like uh, name. And then, similar to algebra, uh, we use an equal sign. And then I want to say that I'm going to put some text in. So text and strings are shown by using quotes. It doesn't matter if I use a single strike quote. So Mr. Booth, I don't mind if you use that single quote or double quote. When I press enter, nothing appears to have happened. But something magic has. If I tell it to print name with no quotes around it, it now thinks, oh, I've got a piece of memory that you've called name. What's there? And I'll print it out for you. So it prints out what was in this position name. It's like having um, a notebook where each page has a different name on it. So that's the name title, like the page number. Um, although page number is better for something else. So if we put names onto a piece of paper saying what's on there. So it's like the title to that page. So that I've got a page with a title of name and I can put onto it Mr. Booth. When I print, tell it to print whatever's on this piece of paper, it goes and reads the string that is there. It's not the same as doing print and put quotes name. This time, what I'm telling it to do is print the string contained within the quotes. So this stuff isn't stored in a variable anywhere. I can't use that. But I can use name. So I could do print and this is the first thing to learn from uh oh sorry i'll put it into another one um for name is and it doesn't matter which quotes we use to describe the uh the string double quotes single quotes either's fine and now if i actually do print i can give a list of variables and Python will print them out. So notice it's done Paul and Mr. Booth. Neither of these, though, have a space in them. Or well, this one has a space, but not a space that will create this space here. So pay attention. When you do the comma, it puts an extra space in. You can change that, but it is by default, that's what Python does. I could print them out the other way around. So 
So at the moment I'm playing about with the commands that we're getting in here. I could change a name. Uh, let's change name equals Mr. Boothroyd. And if I print out name and for name now, there we go, we get Mr. Boothroyd Paul. Um, something else, another way to actually print things out though. So I've done my experiment. I need to actually make it into a copy of the document. When you get this, you should already have your copy attached. I'm trying to make sure that you get a copy that's already pre-shared so there's less for you to do to attach them. So here's my copy. I've done some experimentation. I played about with the words. So I can now put into here what I've been doing. So if I copy my examples, what have I discovered going through? Well, I've worked out ways to print out names. Uh, so we can now give a list of values. A list of variables to print. Um, we can also say things like uh, the uh, variable to be printed does not use quotes. So notice you should be putting in an experiment and your version of it. It doesn't matter if you're doing exactly this or not but your version and what you've learned by doing that experiment. So we keep doing it all the way through. Uh, we can do a little bit of experiment down here. We can do something called full name equals name plus full name. If you're trying to do some of the experiments here, make sure you've entered all the variable declarations above it. Okay. So now I've got full name. It's not giving me an error. If I try using um, a command that says error name equals name plus full name, surname, I've never told it in my experiments what surname is. So I'm going to get an error on it. Name surname has not been defined. That's an important point. Okay. You cannot use a variable before you've actually told it what it is. So you might want to take that sort of common. If it comes up, put it in my experiment. Um, so variable equals must come before using the variable. So if you haven't done variable equals before you get to that point, you can get errors and you'll get something called a name error. Okay, so this is me making really good notes. This, these notes would definitely be grade B if I did it all the way through. Um, the last bit here, this is the piece I would like to emphasize to you, is Python, the reason I'm, I chose Python 3.3 .3 and above is they introduced the idea of what they call a format string. So I'm just writing a program and the way it knows it's a format string is by the F first. That F says the string that follows me will have names of variables put in it. So when I press enter, let's look back and see what my name contains. Name contains Mr. Boothroyd. So when I print it out, it says, hello, Mr. Boothroyd. This name variable gets changed. Now, there's a number of advantages to this um, to do with trying to print out strings like that one. Because the traditional way of doing that looks similar, but there's a number of problems. So that looks like it does exactly the same thing. And it does, but with a problem. We're going to do things with numbers at some point, and you can't just put plus number into this sum to create a hello. So if this was a number, 
I would get an error. If I had a number here, it would put the number straight in for me. The other advantage is um, if you're getting somebody to translate this code for you, what they have to look for is F quotes through your program. And all they look at is what's inside the quotes and they translate that. So if you wanted to translate this to French, print format string bonjour name, what can is allowed then is as you build up these, ooh, I forgot to put the quote on the end, I forgot to finish the quote off. Bonjour, Mr. Boothwood. So a translator doesn't have to know about programming too much. They just have to look for F quotes to change the string. Um, a little note on variables. There's a few things in variables. Variable names need to be descriptive. So this is somebody's name. They need to contain um, also... Uh, you're allowed to use abbreviations. That's fine. So S name instead of forename. So S name equals Boothroyd is fine. It's fairly clear that I mean the surname. F name be my pool. Why I stopped doing Frodo and Baggins, I don't know. Okay, But both of those are fairly clear what the variable is saying. If I just called it S, later on when you see S, how do you know that that's a surname? S name's a bit more descriptive. Um, you can put numbers on them and you can use underscores. So some people actually do S name equals Boothroyd. This is a, a design choice, it's up to you. Oh, S name equals Gandalf. Oops, I haven't put the quote in the front. See, if I don't put the quote in, notice I get this error, E-O-L. It means that the, it found a quote, but it hasn't found the partner. So let's put a quote in front. And now I've got S name, Gandalf. That's a design choice for you. Some people do S name. Um, and so on. Okay, so all of those, uh, I'm not getting errors, they're creating variables for me. Um, don't put numbers first, is one problem, because if Python sees a number first, it thinks you might be doing a calculation. Last one is uh, try to avoid all capital letters. They normally are for things that will never change as a variable name. Uh, first letter capitals, they describe what we call objects or things which have more than one variable in them and possibly more than one behaviour. So if you describe a person, a person has a forename and a surname. So when I could talk about a person, the thing that we call a person, I now know this has two things inside it. Or it has other things. Underscores first normally is something secret. Um, where don't play with it. Basically, whoever created that variable is saying, do not play with this variable unless you really know what you're doing. And there's one that's fairly common in Python code to see underscore underscore name. And that just says, is this program being run first or am I being loaded by something else? If it's being run first, you can do some testing code. If it's uh, being loaded up, it assumes that something else is running the program, so therefore don't do my bit of code. That's a common thing to happen. You don't need to know about it, but you may see it. Uh, we've got to create some variable names then. So let's move into the next exit, give myself a bit of space. So choosing things like variable names. If I chose um, what city are we in? So home city. A good way of saying the home city is to do home, capital C, and I can say I live in Almaty. Uh, home equals Almaty. They're perfectly valid variables to use. Try to avoid putting in things like my city. 
because this probably normally will not be referring to, about you. This would be somebody talking about themselves. So my and your as variable names are often not a good idea. Certain programming languages use my anyway as a very special word. So don't worry about using, uh, don't think about my city. Think about your home city or your home is in Almaty. So that's a bit about variable names. Give us some examples for variables with your pet's name. So an example for that might have uh, pet's name equals, and I've got Ursula around that some of you may have seen in videos before. The last part of the whole video is to do with input. And input is a way to ask the user to enter something. So going back to my home city, I'm going to put a comment in, get the user's home address. Notice now I've got here. First thing to notice about input is if I just do input with nothing, it just waits. It doesn't tell me what to try and type in. It doesn't tell me anything else. And it's waiting for me to type something in. So um, I could say that I live in Echo, press enter. Now, the reason it comes up with the quote is because it didn't know where to store it. Python doesn't know where to store it, so it's just saying, you've given me Acheron, I don't know what to do with this. A better way to do it would be to say, home equals. So we're now telling Python, whatever the user types into the input, put it in the variable called home. So now I can do um, Bolivia. I've now got a variable. Uh, before it was set as Haramati. Let's see what home contains now. So home now contains Bolivia. So I've changed it from Haramati above. Slightly better is if the command can actually tell me, please enter something. Now, rather than putting a print first and then do an input, it's a common thing that happens all the time. So when they design uh, input, they realized, well, we've got space in these brackets to ask somebody to put the text in. So I could say um, country equals input, and then in quotes, a message. So just like any other text, it's a message, which is, what's your home country? Now, in programming, um, it's not uncommon for people to do short versions of sentences. That's not a proper sentence. Uh, if you type in, uh, keep saying, what is your the home country of this person? And someone's used to entering data into this program regularly, it gets in the way for them. So enough of a prompt to tell somebody, this is what you should be entering. Let's put in Kazakhstan. Print the country. And press equals. Now, one big warning for inputs. I keep asking you not to cut and paste code, and I'm going to show you why. I'm going to type into this one um, continent. Which continent are we on? Input. Which continent? Okay, so when I press enter, a lot of mistakes people would make is they start typing in the next piece of code out of their worksheet, and it says print um, the continent. Now, that was the command that you were supposed to type in extra. So the next command, you've got no result at the moment. And if you try printing in continent, Python didn't know that you were typing in code. It doesn't know what a continent is. So when you type it, it actually prints what appears to be itself. That's a common mistake people make. So when you're doing a uh, continent input, make sure you stop, think what you're typing in, and then we can say um, Antarctica. And now when I do print continent, 
I get the message of Antarctica back. So I've got a number of variables around now that I can print things out. I can still print out my name from earlier, which I think was now up to Salon. Oh no, Mr. Boothroyd. So that's the example of what you're doing throughout the lesson. Okay. Yeah, do, do, do.